How you guys doing? We're talking the Xfinity series for the race in Las Vegas. Very quickly, uh, a few things. One that I need to get out of the way just because I've been thinking about it for like 48 hours during my drive back. Dude, Jesse Love is making Shell Goat Creed, the greatest of all time, look like an idiot, man. That two car is so fast that somebody competent. I, I think that's why, you know, Sheldon Creed was just so mad. Uh, following Atlanta because he's like I, I've I, he's never seen that two car lead that many laps before <laughs> between these last two weeks man um, same same thing kind of with uh, like colleague and Justin Haley in the Cup Series like everybody gave you know Haley just a ton of crap for going to Rick Ware I mean dude Haley's finished these races has the 16 or the 31 whoever you know Josh Williams and AJ Almond have these guys even finished the races yet like. Man, dude, it, score one for, for Jesse Love and, and, and Justin Haley for leaving teams that are terrible. When we look at how people – oh, man, i got to fix this. this. See, this is how I know I'm, like, truly incompetent because I did this on complete accident. I forgot to fix it. How do I, I – I'll fix this in other things. Um, I just I'm, – I'm so incompetent and stuff. Anyway, this is the breakdown, the way that I do it, of, like, running position in the top five, top ten, um, pit lane – uh, speeds, fast laps, everything like that. I just break it down in terms of where these guys are sitting at when we look at uh, a let the top 10, which is defined by this here. Uh, this is where people fall in line. I don't uh, entirely envision a whole lot of drastic differences in this. I mean, we have AM, we have Young Motorsports coming in. AM with, with uh, Haley Deegan, more so mid-pack team. And not even a mid-pack, like, you know, you know we, we know what Moffat was bringing. With Young Motorsports, they're filling in probably right around, like, 20, anywhere from, like, 24th to 31st in terms of where they're falling in line at. But in terms of, you know, when we're getting to Las Vegas, yet again, this is the, the back half of the year um, for the Xfinity Series teams. We're seeing a lot of similar uh, things here. Like, it's not going to be a surprise when Junior Motorsports is very fast. It's not going to be a surprise when... SHR is very fast here. Like, it's not going to be a surprise when Austin Hill is running third in, like, every single race. You know, Jesse Love's probably going to fall in line between, like, you know, 7th and 11th, somewhere around there in terms of where this car is running and things of that nature. You're going to notice that I left uh, a lot of the Bushwhackers in uh, this data set. Like, I didn't take out any Hamlin. I didn't take out Dylan Hart Jr. I didn't take those guys out. And so we have a situation where, like, uh, Denny Hamlin, you know, God at Darlington, we have Dale Earnhardt Jr. Um, at Homestead and stuff, but we can still like we know what car the we know what cars those are in. We know how those guys are at. Uh, the main for me when I look at Atlanta entering this weekend, the main thing I'm looking at from last year into this year, and you've heard me talk about it already in the Cup Series video and in the Truck Series video, is more so where the mid pack teams kind of fall. Where have they? either transitioned or helped their program or, you know, stepped up their setups or whatever they're bringing to the track um, between 9th and, like, 21st. That's the main uh, thing we're looking towards. And so, like, for example, like, when we're looking at, like, favorites, <clears throat> excuse me, entering this week, like, Cole Custer is going to be fast. We know that. We know uh, Riley Herbst was showing speed at the end of last year. It, he, didn't just so, he didn't just show speed out of nowhere. He, I mean, he. When you're a top seven car, you take you know small little minor changes. You will, you will get into some victories. You will get into to running well and stuff. When we look at like Sam Mayer, when we look at uh, uh, that's let's do. We'll just focus on Sam Mayer. You know, you look at Sammy Smith. Uh, for Joe Gibbs, you look at. I mean, Barry moved up and stuff. But um, like Brandon Jones is the same cat as always. Uh, like he's just eighth fastest, never enough to get, never enough to get the win. But he, you know he's always there and stuff. So like the the top of the the chart is pretty easy to figure out. Like even Creed, this is what's like shocking. Like if Creed was doing this in w with his like all balls and no brains uh, mindset, I mean Jesse Love is gonna fit right in there to like seventh, eighth best and stuff. Um, Hamrick moved up. Um, I'm trying to think of like the major big guys that we're focusing on. Like Josh, Josh Williams to me is literally a, a direct one-to-one -one, uh, replacement for Daniel Hemrick. I think they have the exact same talent, uh, exact same skill set. Josh Williams has just been stuck driving crap his equipment, you know, his entire existence. Daniel Hemrick, uh, literally, uh, you know, uh, broke the system. Like, he only has one win in history, his entire life. He was never first in anything. He was never first, uh, like, to the recess playground in elementary school. He was never 
first at like the DMV line. He was never first like, uh, you know, getting the first order whenever, you know, a Waffle House closes for 30 minutes, like clean the kitchen or whatever. He, he's never that. The Hemrick is always just the talentless loser who won one race and is now a champion, um, which is wild. But like Daniel Hemrick, you know, uh, eighth, ninth best car on average. That this this should be right where Josh Williams kind of falls into and stuff. You know, when we're looking at Chandler Smith, I think this is a great indicator of where Chandler Smith is. I know it. it you know, we're like, oh well, he's kind of all over the place, up and down. Like, I mean, these these get he's all like mid tier baboons are all falling in between. You know, seventh and thirteenth. Like the big Kahuna's, like the Justin Allgaier. We know where he is. Justin Allgaier is fourth place in every single race. Okay. Fourth place will be defined as, you know, you have three other guys who are faster. Can Allgaier pass him on a long run? Can Allgaier pass him in pit lane? Do one of the other guys have a mechanical issue? Do they spin out? Do they hit the wall? Do they mess up? That elevates Justin Allgaier from fourth to first. That's literally all Justin Allgaier is. Like, all these guys kind of fall in line and uh, and do the, the exact same stuff that we are expecting them to do. So, like, when we look at, like, this weekend's race, with the, uh, the Joe Gibbs cars, we have Creed, Eric Amarola, John Hunter, Nemechek. I mean, we know how Nemechek is going to run. Nemechek is going to be the third best car. Eric Amarola, um, who is hopping in, which we have seen, like Denny Hamlin jumps in. We have seen other guys jump in. We've seen, did, uh, did Truex, did Ryan Truex run any of these? We have Trevor Brain. You know, Trevor Brain hopping in. That's just Patrick Emily, so we didn't have any of that. We didn't have Truex. But, like, earlier in the year when Truex would hop in there, it's going to be a top five car. Uh, probably going to sit Eric Amarola wise gonna sit probably from like fourth to eighth uh in terms of speed um Nemechek's gonna be fast Austin Hill uh we've kind of already highlighted him like we, we know where these guys fall in line it's just gonna this this is where we like do split hairs and this is where we do look at how these guys are doing in, in practice and how they're doing in queue and what they're replicating and stuff where their pit selection is that's when we start you know uh splitting hairs and looking in and and really um breaking down who I want to project to, to be the race winner and lap uh, leader and stuff like that. Uh, but for the most part, we know who's going to be up top. The real main concern is what the heck is going on in the middle of the pack. You know, like when we're looking at like the JD Motorsports cars, you know, when we're looking at like uh, Anthony Alfredo in the five, when we're looking at, um, you know, Corey Heim for the Sam Hunt car, when we're well, like, we know how Corey is doing. Did he run any of them in here? So Corey, Spelled his name incorrectly. So, like, Corey Heim, I would elevate him to probably be 16th, 17th best car uh, with the Sam Hunt racing. But, like, Jordan Anderson and stuff, like, when we look at, like, Jet Burton, how big of a gap do they jump? What, where do they end up going? This, like, very much mid-tier, right around 19th when we're looking at. Um, I think, I think, who who was announced? Let me check. Let me look. Let me look. Somebody was announced to be in the Jordan Anderson car, and I don't remember who it was because when the entry list came through, we did not have it. So let me look. Give me a second here for the other Jordan Anderson car. But, I mean, uh, the reason I have this on your screen is – I think I hope I have it on your screen. I do. Uh, the reason I have it on your screen is so you can, like, look at the stuff and see where every – not where everybody – but you can see, like, where people fall in line while I look through this. Where – I know I like this tweet, bro. Where is this tweet at? Sage Karam is uh, is in the 32. So, which, like, dude, I remember <laughs> I watched qualifying for Atlanta, and I was like, man, Jordan Anderson is slow, man. That is that is a piece of shit car, man. But it's Jordan Anderson. This guy's he has, he has not started and parked. He has not done anything. They're going to – they'll update that. You know, it's just a bad, bad cycle, bad cue. You know, he, he was slow. I'm not too worried about it. Apparently the industry wasn't either. And then, brother, man, dude, I'm sitting in the stands as the Xfinity race is starting. I moved to the front row, section 163, ready to meet my maker. The contest just locks, and they're pacing around like the first time, and Anderson comes to a stop to like readjust his wheel and, and whatever. And I look at him, and all I'm doing when I see Anderson park in front of me uh, under the pace laps is I just I kind of look up, and then I go, Oh my god, I felt like a freaking idiot. 
I felt like an I felt like an idiot because I was like, oh my god, this guy's gonna fucking start and park with this piece of shit car. This guy has blue smoke coming out of the tailpipe on the fucking pace lap. Oh my god, that was not a one-off bad cue. Jordan Anderson actually brought a freaking Mike Harmon motherfucker to the track. And that was that was the most tilting part of the whole weekend because I wasn't able I, I didn't I, like I have AT and T like during the whole week AT and T was terrible so I didn't have like service at the track otherwise I would have just like been messaging every like pull Anderson God please don't play Anderson I'm sorry I'm sorry he's bad Chuck pull him this car is not gonna go I. That was so wicked wild. I was like, oh my god, I play, we got played, man. I really thought they'd up. So anyway, uh, Jordan Anderson, that was that was incredibly tilting uh, last weekend, that Jordan Anderson. He, look, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a start and park. He didn't start and park deliberately. Like, he was out there, but car ran the issues, he parked it. I, that was tilting. That was so tilting. That was the most tilting part of the whole weekend, man. Oh man, I would love to 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 be a, to be a DFS reporter at the track each week because that would have been something. If I had Wi-Fi, oh my God, dude, I would have been spamming Twitter, be like, "Pull Jordan Anderson, God, please, I'm so sorry. I projected this idiot to finish like 25th. I'm so sorry. We fell for it. He started last, 44% chalk. Pull him. Oh my gosh, that was horrendous. That was that was that was that was a disaster. Um, Sage Karam is topping the 32. Got to pay attention because that was wild. Anderson typically hasn't done that, and we haven't seen that in a while. That was a truly off-the-pace machine for that 32 car, and it it was bad. It was not something like, oh, man, you know, we'll just we'll just fix the carburetor a little bit. You know, it just fired to, you know, run a little lean. I was like, this is, this is like, this is a bad machine, man. So, like, that that's that's uh, to know. We'll have to pay attention to uh, practice times and that and qualifying for Sage Caraman, that 32 car. Um, as we continue to go on and look through this field, um, you know, like Ryan Sieg, we know, we know right where he is, uh, falling in line at, which is right here, mainly middle of the pack. Yet again, if people run into issues, if we have like other guys that typically race around him or other people run into issues, you know, that's when, uh, Ryan Sieg gets elevated and goes from like, you know, running or having the 21st to 20th, 19th best car to, the top 15, top 14 car and stuff like that. Um, Perkins, basically, I would 1v1 him uh, with, let me just make sure. I mean, Perkins ran very few races last year. I don't necessarily remember what vehicle he was in, so that is my bad right off the top. So let's go ahead and take a gander and see what cars he was in because he is in an RSS car this week. So let's go ahead and look through the racing reference uh yeah let me know in the comment section how how dumb how dumb how dumb did we all feel playing jordan anderson last week in at atlanta that was horrific that man dude that was horrific both chalk the chalk was gonna the chalk was gonna bust in both instances we we're gonna have austin hill and jordan anderson bust last week that was nuts Okay, so where was he at in Homestead? Perkins was in. Was he in an RSS car last week? Perkins, 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 Perkins. Where he at? Perkins. He was in. He was in the Hour Motorsports car. So uh, that has gone to. Um, so it's basically just the five car now. Uh, but Perkins going from. Hold on, I gotta check this real fast. And, uh, anyway, Perkins was in the uh, the O2 last year, moving into an RSS car. I think he would probably be very equivalent to Kyle Sieg and how Kyle Sieg has been running at the intermediates. I mean, Kyle Sieg is also in this race, but I think that is a good indicator to see where he would probably come in at. I mean, like you don't want to look at CJ because CJ is like actually trash. CJ is the worst uh, racer in history. This guy is like actually the worst driver I've ever seen. Um, absolutely horrific. Perkins is better than CJ, especially in an RSS car. Um, when we're looking at Weatherman, should be a slight step up in equipment-wise. Like, this is what he was doing in, in pretty bad equipment, pretty rough equipment. Um, the fact that he's full-time now in a 91 car, should see him elevate to what Josh Williams was. 
So when we look at Josh Williams and situations where the car didn't break, there's a lot of situations where they ran to bad luck last time. But like this is this is where we would expect this DGM car to fall in line at. Um, like Jeremy Clements, we know right where he stands. Mid pack. Um, I mean, you know, it's not that I'm not trying to like talk or anything or do stuff, but like, I mean, we have a good idea of who's going to fall in line. And once we figure out, you know, the first top two, three guys that we're going to project to, you know, be the race winner guys competing for top three, once you get that squared away and then, then you're just kind of going to, well, what value plays, you know, what, what, who else is the best point per dollar play after I got the top guys locked in to fill my lineups out? You know, like there's no, really no reason to go through, like, let's look at like Ryan Ellis and the other Alpha Beta Prime cars or the other Jordan Anderson cars. Um, this would be a Jordan Anderson car, right? So like Ryan Ellis, oh no, it is Alpha Beta Prime. So Alpha Beta Prime, you know, last year was in the 43s and the 43 again this year. This is where he's coming in in terms of speed. Fringe top 25. The fact that Brennan Poole is jumping in a car like that, and we already know Brennan Poole gets a lot out of his equipment. You know, this is basically Brennan Poole starting last in every single race, um, which may limit his upside a little bit because he typically cute bad in JD Motorsports stuff. Like when we look at, this is where he is in terms of like car wise here. Let's let's kind of break this down. So uh, let's find Poole here. So we got Poole. And we look at his races last year. And specifically look at his finishing position. So this is like basically not averages, but ranked based on, you know, running position, all the stuff that I do. And so this is not the finishing order. This is just where he was in terms of like the car, his speed, where he fell. And this is so he was like, you know, the 26th, 27th best car in these races. But when we look at where Brennan finished in these. So this is, we're looking at Homestead, Las Vegas, Texas, Kansas, all the 1.5s. So this is uh, Homestead. He finishes 19th, okay? He was like the 28th, 27th best car, okay? Uh, when we look at Las Vegas, it's finished 25th at Las Vegas. At Las Vegas, similar, like 28th, 29th best car. Still gained positions better than where he was averaging, you know, where he was. Uh, runs into a crash at Fort Worth. Uh, when we... Look at that in terms of his crash. He was a, he had like real speed caught up in a wreck here. Uh, when we look at Kansas two, he finishes twenty eighth, uh, and he was the twenty seventh or twenty eighth best car here. And so like you can see that like this is where he falls in line. He's a guy who can certainly elevate and do better, especially if we get late race restarts and stuff like that. And he's with Alpha Beta Prime now, so with with pool like you know we should see a slight elevation in, in his average running position and where he runs at however at the same time we're probably going to see him qualify better than what he was already doing so if we start getting brennan pool qualifying like 27 28 26 i mean i gotta project him to finish 25th 24 23rd you know he doesn't have that place differential that we used to see him getting and so that is uh that is something to note and uh and be aware of and not just for him but like other guys going from you know other equipment or, or better equipment and blah, blah, blah. I need to fix this, man. Why, 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 why is it like that? Three, so one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Let's, let's fix that. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, that's kind of where these guys, uh, fall in line, you know? Um, I mean, you know, Ty Gibbs was just unstoppable in, in, some of these races. Actually, he just ran Nashville last year in this one. Um, anyway, entering this weekend should be JGR on top, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, and then probably the probably Allgaier, Hill, Love, rest of the Junior Motorsports guys is kind of filling out your top ten, um, and then Colleague, and then uh, really just everything kind of kind of following the off the off the trailer speed and practice and qualifying and stuff like that. So anyway, that is my uh, preview for the Las Vegas Xfinity Series uh, race. And I will talk to you guys in the live show on Friday for the Truck Series, Saturday for the Xfinity Series, and or maybe one for F1. I don't know. Uh, and then I will be live Sunday morning to talk to Cup Series as well. Uh, I'll see you guys in those videos, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace out, y'all.